Okay, as we mentioned in the other video, there are two main presentation packages. One presentation package that I really like is called Keynote. Keynote, however, <clears throat> really only operates on the Macintosh platform. The other one is PowerPoint, and PowerPoint does operate on the Macintosh platform as well, but it also operates on the Windows platform. <clears throat> They're both great packages. They both have strengths. They both have disadvantages. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about PowerPoint. PowerPoint is probably the most universally uh, utilized presentation package. And again, pr both programs like PowerPoint and Keynote have distinct advantages over free, open source, and or online versions. So you want to be sure that if you have PowerPoint, that you have, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, the full release version or the one that is available to students that you can download the PowerPoint component. Uh, same type of a deal, you'll notice that it has two sets of menus at the top. I'm working on the, the Mac version of it, of it, of course. You have uh, the PowerPoint menu, and then you have inside the window uh, these hierarchical menus. So as we click on each of the hierarchical menus, the menus that are beneath it will change and give you additional options. So we can change the, uh, all the aspects of it. Really, both programs have that uh, built into it, but I think it's sort of a, a unitized or a more uh, Microsoft friendly if you're used to the Microsoft interface uh, within PowerPoint. So same type of a deal I want to reiterate that I did in the other video, that we have transitions and animations. And I want to be very clear that a lot of students mix up transitions with animations. Uh, transitions are not the same thing. They're not the same thing as animation. Transitions are animation between slides in order to transition from one slide to the next. But when you're on the slide, that's actually animation. And animation on the slide can be further divided into a slide build, so the part where a slide comes together, what then what happens on the slide once it's been built, and then an exit of some sort. So uh, right now on, on this, I'm going to leave none. There's a whole bunch of crazy creative transitions that you can build into it. A lot of people like to try using some of these. They're, some of them are a bit gimmicky. You know, there's vortex or glitter or some people will unfortunately pick a different one for each slide. That's really not a good strategy or a very professional strategy. I think in most cases, and I want to uh, echo that here just like I did with the uh, keynote, the most frequently used ones are simple dissolves or simple fades. So I'm going to go ahead and put a fade uh, on each of these uh, transitions from slide one into this one. I also then want to move over to animation. And inside of animations, we have different ways that slides um, really can build, then can animate, and then can exit. So I'm going to click on the object itself, and this is very much like we looked at inside of Keynote. Uh, you can see here these build effects, and you can kind of scroll through the menu can also be sort of torn off if you want to. So we can kind of look at these. So we could do a build effect just like we did inside a keynote that is an appear versus uh, or a fade versus uh, doing it in a transition between each of the slides. But uh, it's neither here nor there. We're going to work then on some of the stuff that can happen within the uh, slide and then the exit effects when we go out from this slide to the next are kind of shown here. How do you want this to exit into the next slide? So the transition effects and the build and exits, I'm not going to focus on for this discussion. You can certainly play with those hands-on, as you should, uh, but what I want to cover in both these slides is the idea of uh, path animation especially. So I'm going to go ahead and use this item, and it is context sensitive as well. You'll notice if I click off of it, uh, nothing is selectable. And when I click on this object, it's selected. So I'm going to go ahead and pick path animation. And you'll notice inside of PowerPoint, we have draw a curve, draw a freeform, draw a line, draw a scribble, arcs, you know, basically some different preset uh, animations that you can build into this. And there's even one called a bounce. And you can see here that the bounce on this one goes uh, from right to left. We could start out with that. I'm just going to go with the freeform one, though, because I want to demonstrate how uh, the freeform type things work. So I'm going to click on freeform here. I'm going to click on my object, and I'm going to draw the animation path that I want to have here. And I'm going to double click at the end. 
So you can see the animation here. And it can be modified after the fact. Okay, we can go into this path and we can rework it. You can see the green point marks the beginning and we can see the red point marks the end. We can go ahead and select over here because I have the animations palette or this animations pane called up Okay, by clicking on here. Uh, we can see the, the animation. So I'll go ahead in this slide and we can kind of watch that again to see how that works. All right, we can have multiple animations on the slide as well. So if we want to have another object kind of come in here or um, for unit two, some people will utilize multiple animations happening in the exact same slide uh, to kind of have a gameplay effect. So you can go back to the, the, the uh, draw or insert and we can insert a shape. We can even insert 3D models if you want to. Uh, Microsoft has a little bit more extensive collection of those. But I'm going to go ahead and put another shape in here uh, on this slide. And then uh, I'm going to add a motion to that as well. Come over here to animations. And this time around, I'm going to utilize uh, maybe just an arc here. Okay, so this is the basic effect. And maybe I want to make that arc a little bit bigger so I can select that path and modify it slightly. And same type of a deal, if I click on this path, I'll notice that there's a green arrow that marks uh, the beginning of it and a red one that marks the end. So now currently I have two animations. I have one labeled one and one labeled two, and they're gonna happen in that order. So if I click on play all, there's the first animation and there's our second animation. And just like in the other program that we're demoing, there are triggers for this as well. So if we work with the animation uh, order uh, on this, we, we're going to see if we go to build the slide, we'll start out with the slideshow here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click. We have the appearance. The circle has a shadow added to it, by the way. I'm going to click here create that and I'm gonna, it's going to wait for the click to go ahead and do then the second animation. So we can go back and determine how we want these to behave in the animation panel. We can click on this and then we can say what are the options that we want to add to this and timing for this. So what's going to trigger this? The first item I'm going to go ahead and leave to on click but you can also set it to occur with any previously occurring animations and that can include transitions or builds and then uh, you can set something as well to after so it's going to finish the first one and then when that one's done it's going to do it right now both you'll notice are set to click both are set for a fairly long duration we can again change the time on that make it even shorter or faster I'm going to leave it alone as is we could set a slight delay on this. So let's say I want it to not quite do this one first and then this one. I want them to do it at the same time, but I want this one to be just a little bit slower. I can come over to this one and set a slight delay. So I'll set about, I don't know, about a half second delay, I suppose, would be good. And then we can also add uh, additional items to this that you're going to read about. Uh, part of a click sequence. So we could set it for... Uh, a more advanced option as far as the number of clicks that trigger this animation. Uh, and then there's the text animation features that are also inside of Keynote as well. So I'm going to set this up though. I'm going to set it to be um, instead of on click with the previous. So they're going to start at the same time. This animation will start. This one will be delayed about a half second. Okay, and then it's going to go ahead and go through. So the duration of this is two seconds long. That means approximately a half a second in, maybe somewhere around here or so, this is going to start moving. And we can kind of check it out again. We'll go back to our uh, first slide. We'll click on this. We'll do our transitions because I didn't build anything in. I'm going to need to do a click. So I have to click for the transition. I have to click to start the process and you'll notice the square started about a half second later. Um, that's the basics of doing this path animation. We can also then add an exit effect to this particular slide. So um, maybe here we can select just the rectangle or maybe we'll select both. Select both items and we'll build in an exit effect and we can pick from again any number of uh, fun and crazy effects that are here. Maybe we'll pick the, the bounce uh, out. Again, I'm not a big fan of sort of these gimmicky things. And now we can see the uh, full 
slideshow at this point. So we'll start this, we'll start to play. Starts a half second later, and the on click, they both bounce out. Uh, same deal, I can control that so that this sort of bounce out that happens at the end, the second effect, instead of being triggered by a mouse click, it'll be after the previous effect is done on both of these. And then this one with previous, with this one. So now we've got an effect that's going to look like this. All right, I hope that helps to differentiate for you the difference between slide transitions, meaning how does one slide transition then into the next slide, and more often than not, we're going to select fades for things like that, and animation. So once the slide is uh, sort of on screen, we have a build, we have an animation, which is the middle part, and then we have an exit, that's the last part. This should get you started pretty quickly uh, with the PowerPoint, and there's certainly supplemental materials both in my previous Zoom lectures as well as places uh, across the web that you can find. But I'm here to help you out too if you have any issues moving forward, so please don't hesitate to ask.